Well, Ted, I don't think you're going to believe it, but the New York Times is throwing shade. Back in November, they say, why do pianists know so little about pianos? Ooh. Would you like to retort? Let's discuss. Is this fake news? Stick around. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Maher. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate the support and we love to interact with you guys. Well, Ted, we were a little bit joking in the beginning, but it is a very interesting article that the New York Times did publish. If you haven't read it, it's a great article uh, published in November about why do pianists not know about the instrument that they play? And it's a loaded question, right? It is a loaded question. Um, and, and I think they're not saying they don't know anything about pianos, but they're saying there's a lot that goes on behind the keys. There's a lot that goes on behind a piano that the majority of pianists that I've known in my life don't know about. Mm -hmm. They know that, oh, my piano's got a key or two off or it needs to be tuned. Uh, and you had an idea that, that this is basically how much of a technician do I need to be as a pianist? That's the other thing. How much of a technician do you need to be as a pianist? And that's one thing that they don't teach you in piano class. And should they? I believe they should because uh -huh. as, as the end result, let's just say, you know, there's a poof, mm -hmm. okay, like a wand. You wave a wand and you can play the piano. And so you go out and you market yourself. Uh, it's a little bit different now because there's portable keyboards and there's digitals, but back 40, 50 years ago, wherever you went, there was usually a piano there. And that's what the band had to tune to. That's what, you didn't use a tuner. You used the notes on the piano and, and or get them as close to tune as, as you could, hope the piano was near tuning and hope that all the hammers worked and that all the dampers worked and that everything was properly maintained in that instrument. And then you go in there, if it was in tune, great. Then you hit the pedal and you find out the pedals don't work. <laughs> okay, so any pianist that walks into that, that's immediately upsetting. And when I first started gigging, I was a, I was, you know, a teenager. I was 14 or 15 years old and you go to a gig and it's not working. It's like, oh, I'm glad I have a junk piano at home that I can keep alive and keep going because I knew how to maintain it. Mm -hmm. I knew how to get it going and I knew how to prep a piano before a gig. You go through all the keys, you make sure the pedals work. If they don't, you fix the trap work. You go in there and you take it, whether it's an upright or a grand piano. Grand pianos, the trap work is almost always messed up. And we went through this just earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were out there talking and someone, hey, they just brought that grand piano in today. And this is like a $178,000 piano or something like that. And if the rods slip out of the lyre and the delivery guys don't put them in the right place, the trap work is not going to work right. Mm -hmm. It won't be silent. It'll creak or it just won't even respond. There'll, there'll be a problem with it. But what's interesting about this article is that it was born out of the quarantine for COVID-19. Exactly. Yeah. And is a piano tuner an essential worker, an essential necessity to go into an apartment house block in New York City to tune a guy's piano because, well, it's his job. And so if it were your printer broke down and you're uh, running a printing press or you need that printer, to, you hire someone to come in and fix your equipment. Mm -hmm. So as a piece of equipment, how much of that piano does a pianist need to know about? This guy went so far as buying a tuning hammer and he never said how that worked out for him, but the article ends with his tuner coming in and servicing his piano. So I have, Finally, a, pretty, right. I have a pretty good idea how he made out with a tuning hammer, about the same as every other pianist I've ever known that picked up a tuning hammer. You can order them on eBay for very cheap. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the tuning hammer that's gonna tune the piano for mm -hmm. you, and it may not be you that's gonna tune the piano for exactly, you. Exactly, yeah. That is a really upsetting process because a tuning hammer does you absolutely no good without the dampening felts and those little rubber things that go in between the keys because you have to tune it like a guitar, one string at a time, mm -hmm. and there's about 226 of them on a piano. Mm -hmm. And so, it's almost more similar to like a violin because of its, its tension. And you know, it's, it's, it's in a piece of wood and so it's, it's not a gear turning like on a guitar head, it's more of your-, your A fine thread inside a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to tuning a cello. Which yeah. to me, I mean, violins are a little easier because there's not as much tension. Oh, when you yeah. get to a cello, but just the idea I'm afraid the that it's going to pop in my face. Okay, so a piano is even worse. If it, but they have 
the pin block mm -hmm. and the pins and all that, but it's even if you did it precisely and mathematically correct, if you don't flatten the lower end of the piano on a gradient scale and you don't sharpen the high end of the piano, when it's perfectly mathematically in tune, it sounds horrible. You have to push the, sh yep. the you have to sharpen the highs and flatten the lows so that there's a, there's a curve in there that matches the human ear. In other words, what the piano is supposed to sound like so that this low A wave is going the same as over here. Mm -hmm. And so that there's, there's, they're all harmonically the same. And then you get to the fifths and the thirds and how all these things need to over, overtone and, and make all these harmonics. A pianist is not going to learn how to do that and be a great pianist at the same time. Because both those things require so much, so many hours and so much dedication. I mean, when to I the think craft. of a pianist, I think of a guy like Lang Lang. This is a guy that's at the peak of artistry in that taking down the most complicated piano literature and interpreting it and being entertaining mm -hmm. around the world doing it. And everyone recognized this guy's a great classical pianist. Horowitz was another one. Mm -hmm. Since I mentioned him, I want to bring him up. Toward the end of his life, he played on one of two pianos. His own or one that Steinway kept for him in the hall. And it was set aside with it. No one really used don't, that. That, that, was, that was his. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to match his at home. So when he played, it was that piano or his original. That is the way to perform as a pianist. And very, very few pianists go out with their own pianos Well, it's almost like impossible that. and just cost prohibitive just, because the labor of moving a nine foot piano from concert hall to concert hall, hall overseas to different countries, it's just, it would be a logistical nightmare. It's and, hard to be a working grunt musician when you got a hall around a 1200 pound piano mm -hmm. and it's physically large and you need at least another person to do it with. And so I, I think it's always interesting to think about like a guitarist, for example, you know, they could have 10 guitars at home that they take three to a gig, take three other ones to another gig. And they know pretty much what those guitars are going to get them, how they play, how to tune them up just right, what, which ones are a little bit flat up at the top of the neck. You know, they, they know all these things about their instrument. But when you're a pianist, like you're saying, it's, it's you go to a different concert hall, a different venue, and every one of them is going to have its own little small things that, and it, it might not even be broken or like not all the keys are working, but just the response of, of that instrument is going to be, could be night and day compared to what you're used Absolutely. to, what you practice on. The one at your home might have some weird things. It probably does. And, and it just translates so differently at every single instrument you go to. Um, and, and that's why people are so, it's all about the touch and the feel, but it's also about the sound and how it responds to that player. And the article mentions, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but it was a classical pianist that was there at Steinway to pick out his piano mm -hmm. for his concert performance that was going to be recorded. And he settled on the one he hated the least. And he had a hard time finding that. He, had, he settled on three he hated the least, but there was one that he actually picked. So that tells you something about how much pianists really know about pianos. They go in there to be pleased on the touch and the tone and how it responds to their playing. Mm -hmm. The problem is, as a pianist, that's the wrong attitude. The right attitude is, I got skills and I need to put it on anything, whether it's a slick Cadillac type piano or a complete piece of junk. Mm -hmm. And how many of those pianists are going to walk in and look at a piano like I have where the bottom keys and the top keys are all burned up from where they would put the cigarette down while they were playing. And then a couple of these dampers don't sound right, so you take the top off on an upright and you look and there's cigarette butts sitting in there instead of the dampers. It's like, someone knows something about being a tech because this piano has been repaired on the fly by another pianist. And that's what they look like. And then sometimes you'll see a pair of vice grips that are there on the side to try to just tune these one or two strings that always seem to slip. Now, I have seen pianists come in and fine tune their own pianos. Um, in between sets, there, I do know a few pianists that own hammers for all the right reasons. And there are times where I wished I owned one because you can find one key that's way out and sometimes just fixing that makes it passable. But included in your book bag when you go to a gig, you need to have a piece of duct, uh, thing of duct tape. So like this key doesn't have a damper, so you tape it down. This one's so bad out of tune, you tape it down. So a lot of 88 keys, you've got like... 84 you can play with. Unfortunately, those, those four you taped out are right in front of your face. Okay, they're right there in the, in, in the midsection. You're going to need those. So you have to learn to play around it. I don't know. I've known a lot of pianists that have gone through some really skank gigs based on skank instruments. I've done it mm -hmm. and I've seen more 
walk away saying, I don't get paid to do this. Mm -hmm. Because they put their artistry first and their ability to perform a certain kind of literature properly. But this piano is, this is, this is a barroom piano. Right? Yeah. I mean, we don't sit around here and talk about how your turnarounds on your Bach mode isn't quite perfect. Okay. Well, and, and with that in mind and the, the, the make it work mentality, um, I think, I think it, it, it is kind of an answer to, uh, to this, you know, the question that the New York Times is asking, why do pianists not know? And, and some of them do, like you're saying. Well, well you know, you don't need to be a, a mechanic to drive a car, mm -hmm. but you also don't just need to be a, you know, unobservant driver to say, I don't know, something's wrong. Well, there's no air in the tires. Mm -hmm. That's why you're having a hard time rolling. I mean, some things are obvious. Yeah. And so, yeah, you do need to know a little bit of something. I think you do, because you're hardly ever going to be playing on your own instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... and I think another alternate take to this, when I read the headline, I was really interested to, to really dive in because I think that question is multifaceted and I think they went one direction with it, kind of the technical aspect right. of the piano um, and, and as far as like the technician versus the, the, you know, the performer or composer or whoever's well, using it. What's interesting, the flack he got when he said it was an essential thing and it was tuning a piano. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hey, you know, to, to each their own. It's a matter of uh, perspective. But but I, I think there's there's an interesting take on the actual mechanical movement of how it operates, and and you know a lot of the times people don't even put put the connection that you know there's 88 keys. I press it, I hit the button, it makes and a it sound. Goes. Uh, and uh, I I think I, I put a little bit of blame on manufacturers here actually, um, and uh, and it's interesting because there's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of smoke of, of, oh, you know, our piano has the best X, Y, or Z, and it's been made this way for, we have patents, you know, we've had thousands of patents before, and we made the piano great, and it sounds, but they never do any education on what is actually, what they actually did differently. They're afraid of trade secrets, they're afraid of leaking right. too much information, and I think to the detriment of the everyday person who wants to know about why it sounds good, why I should sure. be looking at this, um, and, and, and it's gotten better over the years, and with, I mean, with the, with the use of the internet, you can find pretty much any the, the information. The answers are there, and don't ever forget, the part of just the piano being an instrument mm -hmm. is, yeah, that's really what it is, but it's kind of born out of the Industrial Revolution, and people mm -hmm. were amazed at mechanics, you know, and, and watching things like a steam engine operate for the first time, or, you know, a four or eight, eight four horse plow team mm -hmm. be replaced with a tractor and watching a combine doing all the work, a different kind of combine it's instead like of that. an animal pile. Yeah. And so the industrial revolution saw the advent and actually the peak of like the, the piano with you know Chopin writing all this classical literature and, and Beethoven's piano music coming out. All of that happens with the refinement of the hammers and making a better piano that doesn't collapse under, under pressure and mm -hmm. some guy pounding it like Liszt. Looking at all of the keys and seeing all of the strings and the iron frame and all that, that's an important part. Mm -hmm. And I really think that over the years, more pianists should be performing on uprights where you can see everything with working. The, with the, uh, and the top off yeah, on the, the grand pianos that, yeah. and, and put a mirror up underneath so that people can see that this guy is working a machine and that machine at times breaks down in spots like every other machine we build. Mm -hmm. And how much does a pianist need to know about fixing that? I say just enough to get through the gig. So it's like duct tape and gum kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The tuning can be a real problem. Yeah. Because those pins are set up to where you have to have not necessarily a tuning hammer, that is absolutely the best, but vice grips, I've seen other things mm -hmm. work as well. But that is a point of desperation where the instrument should be maintained, mm -hmm. especially if they're paying or someone is getting paid to play it or looking to, sh to perform their art on it so they can hustle mm -hmm. up sales. And, and I think understanding the piano, just from a, from a mechanical standpoint, if you, if you are a piano, it, it will help, you help pick the right one for you. And, and so, I mean, that's why we enjoy doing these videos um, and, and kind of looking at piano actions and, and pulling apart pianos and kind of just looking a little bit under the hood. Um, we're no, by no means experts or professional technicians, but uh, understanding the mechanical movements, understanding different materials that could be used. I, I think of the Millennium 3 action from Kawhi. It's like, why, why does this matter? Um, and, and when you pull the action out and you look at it and, and you ask that question, why, well, what does this do? You know, it, it, was, it was born in the Industrial Revolution, like you're saying, and we don't have steam engines anymore. Like, you know, it, right. a lot of that is old world technology, but with the piano, 
it's a lot of it is essential to making the it's instrument. It's almost identical to the same. And, it, and, it's a, and it's a staple of Western music. It, it fits in pretty much any mix of any song. It can be performed as a solo instrument. It can be performed with a, a whole orchestra. Sounds great in rock and roll. Sounds great with jazz. You can back up anybody. And so, I mean, it's, it's just incredible to, to think of how pianos are, you know, they're, they're pretty much, when you think of performance venues, there's a piano substitute or a piano in most of them. Correct. Um, and that's one of the first things when they're building a, a performing arts center, the first things they're looking for is we need a piano or two or four or universities, we need pianos. Um, it's their staples to these places and, and, um, and understanding them a little bit more than uh, 88 keys. Now I will tell you this, the digital age has changed that mm -hmm. because the digital age has put pianists into a spot to where it's like, it's digital, I don't know anything about it, I just play it. And I have come into some, over the years, some church gigs where you walk in there and there's a digital piano in there. Mm -hmm. And again, some keys need to be taped down because this middle C is playing 10 times louder than any other note on a piano. No matter where you slide the volume, that thing comes out at maximum volume. Whether you hit it with a hammer or you hit it real lightly with your finger, it just comes out where there's some keys. When digital pianos start to get worn out, and some of those rubber sensors, things get, yeah. get, get gassed out and they start cracking and drying, the sensors go up. They're, they're just as nightmarish as an acoustic. Sometimes piano. worse. Yeah. Some, a, a lot worse. And so, yeah, so where we are today is, uh, it's almost know your instrument to, your, to the capacity you want to use it. And, and, Correct. And if you, uh, and so I think it was an interesting article that the New York Times put out and, I, and it, was, it was definitely cool to see that perspective of, um, you know, these two, craftsman, you know, a pianist who has been training their whole life to play piano and a technician who's trained hundreds of thousands of hours to like get a working instrument to sound beautiful, to be in tune. Like you said, there's yeah. so much science behind how it has to settle in tune and the mechanical action. It's, it's incredible. Um, and so it was, it was just a cool coming together of those two, two worlds. I also thought it was kind of fascinating. It's a great description of, of what being a professional pianist is, is that Instead of using the phrase POS, they use PSO, which is a piano-shaped object, which is what most of those pianos are when you get to a gig. Well, it looks like a piano. Uh -huh. And it, to most people, it sounds like a piano. But to the pianist, it's like, yeah, but none of the notes work. The damper pedals, I can't sustain. Well, thank you guys for watching. Again, this is Ted Barcelo. I'm Patrick Moore with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channels. Um, we have a guitar channel where we review all acoustic guitars, electric guitars, have a lot of fun doing it. And we have a, uh, an audio channel that reviews mostly synthesizers right now, but we'll branch off into to other cool instruments there. Um, and of course, me and Ted here like to talk about all things pianos, digital pianos, history of pianos. We have a lot of fun doing it. Well, thank you guys again for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.